Are you surprised that after all this time and the evidence that we've seen in cities like Detroit and uh, all the sort of urban disasters that we've experienced that, that in some ways you're still regarded as a radical? No, it doesn't surprise me. Um, people don't change their minds that fast. Somebody said, um, it's a rather grim thing, that uh, progress occurs funeral by funeral. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, I put a great deal of faith in young people. Uh, of course, they turn old and they may get frozen in their ideas. But uh, they don't have quite as much trouble accepting new ideas. You're leaving out the most important things about economies. Um, you can't have greed unless there's something to be greedy about. Where does that come from? You can't have envy unless some people have things. Where do those things come from? This is all superficial. There have to be new things arising. We'd still be hominids going around scavenging, probably without even any, any tools to kill animals if there hadn't been development. Uh, Innovation. Hu human beings developed tools, and they developed them out of found things, generalities, bones, sticks, stones. Uh, whatever they found, and in a seamless way, really seamless, uh, with that base of found things in nature, our economies began. They began with making spears, with uh, using fire, using skins to, to wear, to warm ourselves, all those things. As you say in the book, human beings exist wholly within nature as part of the natural order in every respect. Sure, and nature cast us up. We didn't make our brains. We didn't make these opposable thumbs. These are something that nature did. But afterwards, we've got and human you, intentions. And you can say that uh, everything that we do uh, yeah, is contrived by nature. We're the intermediaries. <laughs> Nature cast us up with these abilities, and they're just as uh, much natural to us as the spider's ability to weave a web and to sting prey is natural to a spider, or a bee's ability to make honey is natural to bees. What we can do with our brains, what we can do with our hands, is natural to us. It comes from nature. And we use it the same way nature develops an ecology. Part of me likes the metaphor of seeing uh, e economies in ecological terms. It's not a metaphor. It's the same process. Okay, even in the process and the language and seeing it as a natural thing. But part of me thinks that nature, well, it's a great thing, has a, has a what Tennyson used to call the red and tooth and claw. It's competitive and it's violent. And I think sometimes our human intentions override those things and we do philanthropic things or altruistic things. We do if we can afford them. People on the thin edge of hunger constantly can't be very philanthropic. They don't have the wherewithal. It still leaves us with this question about the, uh, the competing theories of competition. Is it survival of the fittest or is it survival of the people who cooperate best? It's both. Uh, competition is very important. Uh, it's important in, in economies. Uh, that's one reason I don't like uh, monopolies. Uh, you don't get the benefit of competition. And nature certainly <coughs> uh, likes competition. It's a way of testing. The fact that there are top dogs in certain economies doesn't mean that they're good economies even for top dogs. Uh, the best economies are ones in which there's opportunity for a great many different things, not in poor ones that are uh, dominated by a few winners. I guess this does have a, a real stake in how we plan our economies because... We can't plan them. That's another point. Here we have poor areas in Canada. Um, 
that we do, the government spends a lot of time and money and budgets and so on trying to make them more prosperous. And they can't do it. Uh, Newfoundland, uh, you know, they could learn more by looking at Iceland, which has a very similar uh, resources, very um, small population too, and it's remarkably prosperous. And here's Newfoundland, so poor, uh, killing off its own cod. Yes, well, of course, you've been really critical about how the fish subsidies in yeah. Newfoundland have actually been responsible for the collapse of the cod stocks. Absolutely. You're critical of subsidies. What do we do with these fishermen and, well, and, and these communities. They've got to do other things than fish, and this is uh, one thing that Iceland does. That's why I say that Canada would be do much better to seriously study what Iceland does and what its history is and what kind of economy it has than to um, go in for, um, you know, idiotic big cucumber uh, projects or put their faith all in oil. When we talk about the economy, right, we talk about where we can put money into tax cuts or, ta you know, tax cuts or social subsidies. These are the questions. No yeah. one talks about um, the kind of things in this book, bifurcations, negative feedback. People talk about where do you want the money? In the oh, pocket for they myself don't, or in the government? They don't talk about these things because um, they haven't been taught them. Uh, they've been taught something else. Uh, most people, you know, the, the chance to, to think about anything uh, as much as you want to is a great luxury, and most people don't have it. And I wouldn't have it if I had to earn my living some other way. Uh, but, but what do you think uh, when the government says, you know, these are, we just had a budget come down why last should, month. Why should, you keep thinking governments can, are inventive, can initiate things and ideas. Uh, the governments are one of the last places that new ideas uh, sink in. Some people think that uh, the stock market is the economy. It's very superficial. There were economies in the world long before there were stock markets. Stock markets are symptoms. So how do you define economy? It's uh, what people do to make their livings. If uh, you're making your living as a hunter, it determines how you live. If you're making your living as a subsistence farmer, it determines how you live. And the more diversity and the more prosperity an economy has, the more choices there are in it. How will economists respond to this book, Classic Economist? Um, some will like it and some won't. You don't care if people don't like your stuff, do you? Um, I think that's their problem. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, on the left and I want to embrace Jane Jacobs. I'm in the center and I want to embrace Jane Jacobs. I'm on the right and I want to embrace Jane Jacobs. I have reasons from all ideological positions to both love you and loathe you. Yeah. That's because I'm not ideological. What is I your think ideologies about? are blinders. Always have been. The kind of mind I have is basically uh, a scientific one. And I respect uh, observation and experiment and what happens and not uh, abstractions or theories about what ought to be or what ought to happen. I like to know how things really work. How are things working now? From your point of view, because you know, one day you see the news and it's really depressing. We're losing species and we're losing topsoil and there's overpopulation. On the other hand, things may be, may be getting better. There's moments of altruism. There's all sorts of good news. Sure. It's, uh, wasn't it Dickens who said it was the best of times and the worst of times? It always is. Uh, bad things are happening and good things are happening. Uh, we, you just hope that more good things keep happening than bad things. The very fact that we know we're losing species 
depressing as that is, it's a gain over when we didn't realize we were losing species. Now we know we are, and we've been alerted by people who care about it and who understand it, and they tell us what the consequences may be. Uh, it's important that we know that. I call that progress, that at least we're aware. Ignorance is one of the worst sins, I think. You hold creativity and innovation in real high esteem. Yes, because we have to do things better than we're doing them. And where are we going to get better ways if we aren't creative and if we aren't innovative? We use what's called human capital. Our skills, experience, and human capital is wonderful. It's the, it doesn't run out. The more you use it, the more you have of it. 